Hello, and welcome to Learning Without Tears, Ask an OT. I'm Katrina Erickson, and I'm an occupational therapist. I've spent the majority of my career working with children with handwriting as well as school readiness skills. And today I'm gonna to answer the questions that you've sent in to us through Facebook and Instagram. So the first thing we're gonna kick off with is how to keep learning fun, either at home or at school, when we've put so much focus on technology during virtual learning. Then I'm gonna move on into how to increase sensory stimulation, especially in restrictive environments where we are doing virtual or social distance types of learning, whether you're in person or doing that remotely. And third, I'm gonna talk about how um, hand over hand is still needed as a teaching strategy in your classrooms, whether you're teaching young learners or you are teaching children with special needs. So I'll talk about that and why it's important and some additional strategies that may help. So let's get started. Well, that's a great question. And um, today with our virtual learning and during our pandemic, our technology has really come to the rescue to help us. Um, but it can be overwhelming at times. As a matter of fact, technology can increase stress levels. It limits some hands-on um, activities and it's really hard on our eyes, okay? It causes a lot of eye fatigue and kind of cognitive fatigue as well. Now, if you're using really good digital teaching tools, you can keep the engage engagement up and help your children learn. But here's just a few more ways that you can work on handwriting or other learning activities without ever touching technology. And the first one I wanna talk to you about is dice. Now, dice are a fun game um, in any way because when I think about fun, I really think about children and children's games. So you can make your own dice like I have here. I have some capital letters on dice and I have some lowercase letters on dice. And all I did was use a nice little template that um, highlights or, or is able to be um, written on and folded. And you can find these online and you could, you know, roll out letters that you want to have your children practice or maybe write words that start with. Um, and with that, I I want to share a really great and fun game that came to us um, through Emily Napton. And um, I'm going to put a post in it in our blog. So make sure that you go ahead and follow through to the blog so that you can get the download for this. And it comes with a dice sheet with our frog jump capitals on it. And then also a downloadable sheet for them to practice in the gray blocks. So I hope that you check this one out. There's a great video of her students using it in her classroom. And it's a great fun way to get your children engaged in playing and practicing letters without technology. Now, another thing that you can do is um, I think about games and I think about spinners, okay? So I have a spinner here with all the letters on it. Children can spin letters to practice. Um, they could also do one with number practice. Now you could do this for cursive as well. And I love this spinner because then they spin it for what activity they're going to do. Is it gonna be the slate? Is it gonna be our roll of dough letters, the stamp and C screen, the wood pieces? Or maybe they do it with with um, shaving cream on a, um, a baking sheet. So lots of fun things that you can do there. Now you could also create your own make um, activities like I have done with some of my students. Um, I have a very special envelope that's their very special envelope. And um, when we start off our sessions and even at home, I have parents do this with their students. And as a teacher, you could do this with your students as well. Maybe you um, need to uh, work on something and maybe they aren't able to play around the playground, but they could go walk and see things. So they could go either on a scavenger hunt, okay, um, or even a nature walk. So I'll hide a, um, a, an activity in their special envelope for them to do during the day. Now let's say that they went on a nature walk and you found and saw some things. Well, they could write about what they saw if they're old enough to write about it. They could write the letters that begin at the beginning of those letters. They could collect items and make a picture and then you could show them how to write the letters in those words. So I've got an example of that here with a young girl that um, we went on a nature walk. She found some leaves and some sticks and she made herself her own fall butterfly, which is what she calls moths. Um, so uh, that was she that that was her um, understanding of the moths that she was seeing um, in the evening times and throughout the day and they were called fall butterflies so I'll show you a picture of that right now
All right, now lastly, um, I do wanna just follow up and talk to you about tic-tac-toe. How about tic-tac-toe? What a great game for young kids, right? Um, and tic-tac-toe doesn't always have to be about X's and O's, right? It can be letters, it could be numbers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, real quick, I just wanna show you about tic-tac-toe and using it with letters instead of X's and O's. Now, of course, your student can always be an X or an O if they know those letters well, and you would be a letter or a number that they need to learn how to do. So, for instance, I might let my student go first and I'll say, okay, you choose and go ahead and be an O and I'll let them be an O. And maybe I need them to learn how to make the capital letter N correctly. I will be the N, I'll say big line down, jump back up to the top, slide down and push up. All right, now it's your turn. Then the student will put their, their next one in. They know how to make the O really well. And I'll say, okay, um, now it's time for me to make my N. I wanna block you. So I'm gonna say big line down, Jump back up to the top, slide down and up. Always make sure that you say it as you're making it. And you're gonna continue this play, okay, until somebody wins the game, all right? And then on this second game, what's gonna happen is you're gonna switch letters and you'll let the student be the N and you're gonna be the O, all right? Um, and you'll just play along that, that way. Now you can do this with letters and numbers. You could do it with lowercase. So you can see here that I have a lowercase one. And what I did is I just drew in the baselines with our double lines for the student um, to be able to work on placement. And so we're doing Bs and Ps here. Um, but I always highlight the grid of the, um, the tic-tac-toe board so that they can focus on where they're supposed to be placing um, their letter within the lines and what is their tic-tac-toe grid. So this could also work for uh, cat cursive as well. So here's an example of a tic-tac-toe board for cursive. All right. Now I hope that you have found some of these activities, things that you'll want to improve uh, and, and put into your learning environments, whether you're at home or at school, to get additional practice with handwriting without ever touching technology. So we're gonna start off with um, incorporating activities within your core subjects that um, uh, encourage the children to move. So something like a game like um, make a move. So let's say you're talking about um, a writing prompt or you're talking about a particular subject and maybe you're talking about writing about what the children would prefer to have, pizza or maybe a hot dog. And so if you would like to write um, about um, pizza and how much you love pizza and your opinion on that or why you love pizza. And what I want you to do is go ahead and move and sit on the floor next to your desk or next to your chair. And if you want to write about a hot dog, I want you to wave your arms up in the air, right? Um, you can make more complex movements uh, with your students if they're capable of doing those. Um, you could have them um, touch and move. You could even add in more sensory stimulation by giving them something heavier to move um, in their in their designated area. So what I'm thinking about here is possibly taking a small bag of rice or dried beans and then duct taping it all the way up. And if you want to, um, if you think that the answer to our word problem today is five, I want you to take your bag or whatever you want to name it and hold it up over your head. And if you think that the answer is seven, I want you to put it on the floor beside you. And then everybody would pick their item back up or bring it back down. So it gives them some of that um, kind of heavy work as well. So look for ways to incorporate making moves into everyday curriculum. Now, other things that you should be looking at, um, it, no matter what the situation is, but definitely in our pandemic with more restrictive um, environments are good brain breaks. Um, we need to get children up, we need to get them moving. And one of the best ways to do that is through music and videos. And you should check out um, our Handwriting Without Tears interactive digital teaching tools and our pre-K interactive teaching tool. We have lots of engaging videos where children can watch other children move and dance to songs and um, also the music components. So lots of great videos and music. And while I'm talking about music, let me just share with you a couple of my favorites. Um, and one of those is the um, Where Do You Start Your Letters, okay, from uh, our Handwriting Without Tears curriculum. And let's go ahead and watch a short clip of students doing this in the classroom. Where do you start your letters at the top? Where do you, Where do you start your letters at the top? Remember, start it at the 
All right, that was fun. Um, another one of my favorite songs is the um, I Am a Fine Musician, and that's from our pre-K curriculum. And children get to move around and model playing different types of musical instruments, okay? Like the violin or a banjo, right? Also a harmonica. And they can move around in their designated area and act out those musical instruments. And finally, my other favorite song from our pre-K curriculum, it's on our Get Set for School sing-along CD, is Spiders Love to Party. So I like for children to go ahead and make me a little craft spider. So I have my little craft spider here. And we can dance around with our spiders in our area. Um, you could even teach children about the eight legs that spiders have and have them interlock their thumbs. And then they have eight legs on either side and they can dance their little spider around. Um, so it's a fun song for children to get up and move. So make sure that you're giving them opportunities for brain breaks. Now there's lots of things online. Um, you can find things on YouTube, you can find music. And um, I also want to encourage that you're uh, doing some obstacle courses. You could do those around the periphery of your classroom and set up zones. You could also do it out in the hallway as long as you set it up at a time when other students wouldn't be moving throughout the hallway. Um, they could hop through the red zone. They could maybe um, do a bear walk in the brown zone, maybe commando crawl underneath uh, your teacher table in the green zone. Um, they could walk on their tippy toes in the blue zone. So you could have different things. You could challenge your students and change those throughout the year. Now, lastly, I have our total posture stop for you. This is something you can do with your students right in their seats. They don't have to move. And it's a great way to wake up their brains, get their bodies moving, get a lot of sensory information, um, and get them ready for more learning. So let's go ahead and watch um, some children doing parts of the total pos posture stomp in class. All right, great. I hope that you enjoyed these ideas and I hope that they inspire you to add more movement into your classrooms, no matter what situation you are working in. Well, we're all in a new type of learning environment. Whether you're in a in-person teaching, you are doing um, your lessons through a hybrid type of, of um, approach, or you're all remote. You may be doing things synchronously and asynchronously. And I want you to know that the strategies that you'll use with children can be utilized in both, uh, in both type of situations, whether you're in person or at home, you just need to make sure that you get the um, help of the person of the child's grown-up helper. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about why hand over hand is still needed during our pandemic. You know, I've consulted with some of my um, OT friends, so I was talking with Denise and Peter, and we were thinking about ways that um, we could maybe do some type of a replacement, but there's not really a replacement for hand over hand instructional strategies. Um, children, really need that tactile and proprioceptive input to learn some basic skills. Um, not all children will need them, but most will need them at some point or another. And there's also a, a pop population that we have in special needs that really benefit from hand over hand. So if your students need it and you need to use it, we do, there's not a replacement for it. It's so important that the children are getting that tactile and proprioceptive input from you. Um, and then you start to back those, uh, those uh, prompts off so that your children can start to do it on their own. Now, of course, if, you're, if your child needs that type of learning, you're going to want to make sure that you use gloves, lots of hand sanitizer and hand washing. Make sure you have your station set up so that when you're working with students, you can quickly go through that sanitation before you move on to another student. And I really suggest that you do this during small group or one-on-one -on -one teaching. And you'll be able to identify the students that are really going to benefit from those, okay? Now, 
Other strategies that work um, for a lot of students are by breaking the task down into um, smaller, more achievable steps. And as OTs in our community, what we call this is task analysis. And so I'm going to walk you through that with scissor skills. Scissor skills are something that um, require a child to use a whole bunch of different skills all at once. But let's think about what the skills of using scissors are, for instance. So for using scissors, they first have to know how to hold them correctly. Like where does their thumb go? Where do their fingers go? How do they hold their other, the rest of their fingers? Then they have to learn how to open and close the blades on the scissors. Then they progress to doing this on paper by snipping the paper, not cutting along a line first of all. They start by snipping the edges of a piece of paper and then they move into cutting lines and then finally shapes and thinner lines, okay? So if we break that task of cutting down into those individual steps, one of the first things we would wanna do is make sure that our students were holding them correctly. And we would want to model that and then have them put the scissors down and then pick them up and put them down so that they knew and be developed a good automatic skill for doing that. So I like to mark my children's scissors with um, some duct tape, some colorful tape, so they know exactly where their thumb goes. And then we will just practice opening and closing, and we may do that to a rhythm. We may go open, close, open, close, and they will repeat that. I'll show them, and then they will imitate. Now, if your children are having a hard time with this type of coordinated movement, um, introducing them to tongs are a good activity. So here's some children's tongs. Um, these are pretty fun to to use, but you could also just use regular chopsticks and create what we call cheater chopsticks, okay? You can search online for how to make some cheater chopsticks. I happen to have some cheater chopsticks that are already made with the little kind of um, uh, clothespin clip at the top. So all you have to do is push to close and then release to open, okay? So it helps to build that skill and strength of closing the blades of the um, the scissors, and they could use this for sorting activities, but don't forget to check out how to make your own little cheater chopsticks. You could also use small tongs with your students and tweezers as well. So make sure that you're breaking the skills down for your students, whether it's scissors or grip, into small achievable steps, okay? Um, model those for your children, and if you need to use hand over hand, just use your good hand sanitation and healthy habits um, when you do those things. All right, now talking about grip, you've come to the right place for that because what we do at Handwriting Without Tears and Learning Without Tears is that we already break those steps into what we call a, a, a achievable step. So we start with teaching pencil grip we and crayon grip by showing them how to position their fingers. Now you could use your document camera or other types of projection technology to make a larger than life image of your hand and how your fingers are holding it and ask your children to demonstrate that for you. Um, make sure that they have a nice bent thumb and go around and check everybody and those that you need to touch and move, go ahead and do that during that moment that you need to and then do your proper uh, hand washing or hand sanitation. And then um, have them drop it and then have them pick it back up and see if they can't remember how to position their fingers without you having to go in and give that extra tactile or proprioceptive input. And so they're just going to pick up and drop it. And what we have at Learning Without Tears is music to help them learn and practice this skill. Music has a way of engaging children and helping them learn skills. So we have music to help them learn the proper finger placement for both pencils and crayons as well. All right. So, um, Make sure that you're modeling, you go, do good direct teaching, show them how to do it, make sure that they're imitating you. If you need to use hand over hand techniques with your students, there's no replacement for it. So you need to find a way to make that happen for your student. Don't forget to break it down into achievable steps. Use music and engagement to help them learn and remember the steps that they need to do. And don't move on too quickly through the steps um, because they need to master those earlier steps before so that they can use them um, for cutting lines. And in writing with grip, they need to use that good grip to make strokes and shapes and also numbers and letters. All right, um, I hope that these have been helpful tips for you if you have a question for us and we'd like to have it featured in one of our future upcoming Ask an OT series, make sure you drop us a comment um, on this video or send it in through Instagram or Facebook. All right, have a great day.